Little Globe. Hello, Santa Fe, and welcome to Little Globe TV, episode number four, Limbo Together. Uh, I am the executive director here at Little Globe, Chris Jonas, and the co-host of tonight's evening. Um, you will be seeing an array of, uh, of videos and stories and songs from across town during this time. And uh, But before we get started, I want to introduce you to Jason Silverman, my co-host. Jason, are you somewhere out there? <laughs> Chris, I'm right here, three feet away from you. So, well, no, six feet away from you, socially distant. Uh, Chris, I remember um, I saw you do the limbo once, and how's your back? That was a largely unsuccessful ad adventure. Uh, and Jason, I think you're actually quite good at limbo. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, I'm really good at limbo. I'm super limber. Uh, we're really grateful to be here tonight with Little Globe TV. This is our fourth episode. It started as an experiment. It's taken hold here in Santa Fe. We're getting more submissions uh, each episode, uh, send your stories, poems, songs, funny jokes, stupid pet tricks to us. Uh, we'll use them. We love incorporating uh, everything that Santa Fe is doing. Uh, one of the things we love also is working with young filmmakers, uh, and one of them is going to be our co-host tonight. Please uh, welcome Aurora Escobedo. Thank you, Jason. I'm very happy to be here and help hosting our fourth episode, Limbo. Up next, we have unique storytelling from our very own Dylan Tenorio. So, uh, what what do you think you're gonna you're gonna do after COVID? Man, I don't know. I really don't know. Everything is just so uncertain. Oh shit, man. Mm. I really don't know. When is this gonna end? If this ends. Next year, I mean, in you know, after the flu season of the fall, yowza, yowza! <laughs> oh no! Just with everything that's kind of in the air, with all the the racial tensions surrounding the statues coming down, it it really bringing a lot of ugliness out of people. Some of you know my fellow Americans just. Don't make it easy for me to be proud as an American. There's a lot of undertone of unhappy people out there. <laughs> a lot of my artwork, it's, it's inspired off the community and, and the interaction yeah. I have with my community and that's just not happening this year. So good, man. We need water, we need rain, but you know what? You know, I was thinking about this. All of the Pueblos are practicing social distancing. I don't think they're all having their dances and whatnot. But that might be contributing to this drought that we have, you know. Those dances usually bring rain. Yeah. Maybe if I can hear my cat. Let me just open the door. This is uh, our cat. Archie. Archie! <laughs> what button are you pressing, Archie? I want to know how, how you've been holding up for the past, like, few months. Well, what to say about that? I don't know, I feel like I'm in limbo. My name is Veronica Aymacanya. I come from a place called Quito. It's surrounded by massive mountains and volcanoes. I grew up in a very lovely and big family. I spent lots of time with my grandmother from my mother's side. My mother, father, and my three brothers live in Ecuador right now. I studied cultural anthropology in college. 
and at that point I met my husband because he was one of the exchange students from UNM. I fall in love, and after a whole year of separation, we re-meet again and get married soon after that. I am now a mother of two wonderful children, one boy and one girl. Happy birthday to you. One of the things that I really miss from my country is the food. Hola, estamos haciendo pistiños ahora. ¿Y qué es esta comida? ¿De dónde es? Es de Ecuador. The ¿Y tropical dónde lo food. Lots of colors, fresh juices, exotic fruits, etc. I also miss the Sunday family gatherings, and I miss my friends and also a good dance party. I want to share my experience about my son and I when he was really little. I was walking with him to the park. I'm pretty sure I was carrying him. A person noticed our presence and I was being mistaken for his nanny. That story has some blueprint in my memory because then I started realizing how dark I was. I was being mistaken with a nanny of my own son. I don't think I have any concrete reaction at that point. I don't think I said anything. I didn't have anything to say. I was just in shock. Now I understand how deep it was. I'm constantly working on just feeling proud of who I am, regarding of how other people see me. I'm trying to find a balance between both cultures. I'm planting roots here. That means that I'm looking toward the future, here with my family, and I am considering New Mexico home. Mommy, we got some fish! Amy Goodman. Daily U.S. coronavirus cases surge to their highest level since the start of the pandemic for the second straight day.
and its hearts so true. What is New Mexico? Nope. The state this time is Montana. Back to you, Kyle. I'm trying to do uh, like something like community service or something to like donate some money because I don't know I haven't been to, like the protests or nothing but maybe if I can like come out of retirement and like do some kind of fight or something for like to help like the black people like for Black Lives Matter like I'll do something like I saw like Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield and all these people they're doing like some training videos now so like you know we're from new mexico like johnny tapia you know like like we're known for that kind of stuff too so like if i could do something like an exhibition fight or something or even if i just fought someone in all subs or giant parking lot or something like even i made like 50 bucks or 100 bucks like i'll donate that shit so like you know let's see what i got this long history of, well, we've always lived here and we live on this piece of land and you live in a house that your dad built. And the story of you're college educated and you need to move to a larger city to find a job in the field that you're looking for or to meet your professional goals or even to have any, you know, the kind of income that you would need to, I don't know, make something of, of your art and your life. And so, as I started thinking about this story and as I started thinking about the gaps between what it was like at home and what it was like when I left home, it became clear that for every situation in which I felt safe and secure and normal, there was one in which there was something that pointed to not really belonging. I'm not quite sure where to go or what to do because of the larger story that like, it's getting expensive to live places and it's hard to find work and I'm overqualified for a lot of jobs and underqualified for a lot of jobs. And then there's the other part of the story which is that my parents' house is nice and they live on the east side of Santa Fe and my dad built it and I wanted to, you know, go home and handle some of that. This is like one of the only places I'm not thinking about what I'm doing or where I'm headed or why I'm living where I'm living. It's interesting down here, it's hard to tell if these are like native species or if somebody planted one and they, you know, like it's in a yard somewhere and it kind of transplanted over here. I grew up hearing a lot of nostalgia about, oh, this is what it used to be like. And, um, and I think that those stories are really important. I think we need them. But at some point I started noticing that that compulsion in myself, the desire to say, oh, it's never going to be the way it used to be, came with this underlying sense of hopelessness. And I really wanted to understand what that was about. I wanted to know why we felt hopeless and why we felt like we'd lost something. Why do we feel hopeless that the world is changing around us and we're not changing with it or we're changing but we're not changing fast enough or we're changing but in ways we don't want to? Is it a question of allowing it to happen or is it something that's happening to us?
That was a piece from last year's project, Presente, where we explored belonging and finding a home in Santa Fe. Next up, we have Rock Your Mocks with Aaron Kinate. Aaron, take the stage. Hey, I'm in the kitchen today and I thought I might show people how to pit a cherry with, um, if you don't have a cherry pitter. So I just have a regular cherry. You can use a chopstick, works pretty well. Just take it and push it in the top and push the seed right out. With creating a comic, you do have to take your time. It's such a personal journey, especially when it's about such a serious subject matter. And it's just like, learn to like, take it as it is. I think about how stupid humans are. If we just worked together, we'd be in the stars beyond our universe. I do try to draw every day. It's sort of always a constant need where if I don't draw, I feel like I'm gonna go insane, basically. Instead, we create more monsters for ourselves. History has actually become a quite frequent theme. I'm exploring Lilith, the first woman mm. to come in, you know, to the world. She was Eden before Eve, and she said no. <laughs> she wasn't going to follow the rules, and she kind of just got erased from history. So kind of wondering, well, how does that feel, you know? When I'm on chemo, I think about space. Space travel will not happen in my lifetime, I think. I mean, I love food. That's the worst part about dying, is I don't get to eat anymore. My favorite foods, hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos, mac and cheese seafood. I like everything. Something else. Hey, what? 
The only thing I can compare it to is uh, like a breakup. That feeling of waking up in the morning when somebody has broken up with you the day before and you wake up in the morning and at first you wake up and you sit up and you feel all right and then the knowledge of what's happened kind of seeps back in and this weight, you take this weight on that you just it can't shake. Make time was something we had started in Florida and we decided when we got here, El Dorado had a real need for something for children to do. Um, it really is, it's who I've decided to be. Um, and so without it, I kind of feel lost. I've spent the last three years working twice as hard as I ever did as a teacher and not taking a paycheck. My family has been dragged through all of that to the point where we've had to adjust to living on one person's uh, income. Last summer, we had our first really successful summer, brought in $60,000. I spent every bit of that money on more equipment to provide better things for my community, knowing that this year we would do as good as that, if not better. And that at that point, I would take money out of make time pay off all the debts that I have, and get to pay myself finally. Maybe not a lot, but something. And having COVID hit when it did completely wiped that. We had big plans for expanding into this building, creating an art center. I mean, we're paying our lease here and not losing this space so that when all of this is done, we can come back and hopefully build this into the community center that we know it can be. The day my grandma's spirit, when my grandmother was alive, left as a butterfly, 
we walk through the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like grandma's hands rubbing over the adobe in the sand finds its way in my memory so alone. The shameful legacy of America's history of lynching. Left as a butterfly across the wall let's breathe life into these houses for homes of the homeless like grandma's hands rubbing over the adobe in the sand her presence and her energy she was born in 1927 in amherst virginia i wondered at the time did she know somebody who experienced this fate part of america's shameful legacy motion of our roots that ground us back to the places that we knew. Breathe in life into these houses. We gotta move and action is not an option. Yet we plant our feet firmly in the earth and stand pushing forward into the land. Left as a butterfly. Into the fire and let it breathe. We will not stand still one second longer. And the seeds which we planted rise above the clouds. The prayers won't be supplanted. And we can try to find a path that will lead us to a place where we can finally live once again, hand in hand, what it was like before the taken land. I don't know where this will all go, but I know that if we do not come together, we will cease to exist. Where are we now, but in the beginning of the night? The entire Little Globe team went up to uh, make footage of the caterpillars who are munching their way through our forest right now. Uh, Dylan Tenario edited that piece, one of our junior filmmakers. Next up, we're going to talk about education and equity, uh, an important issue at any time, but especially during this summer of protests. Uh, we did this piece in partnership with Searchlight New Mexico. Uh, it was produced by Juliana Brenner. Right now, inequity is on everyone's mind. So we turned to Miguel Acosta, the co-director of Earth Care and one of the city's leading educational activists. So Miguel, why are education and equity your passions? Well, part of, part of the motivation uh, and, and it's, uh, it's difficult work uh, is getting past this idea that education is a great equalizer. Uh, education and schools are actually a reflection of their communities and, and, and their families, right? So, so the outcomes you see are a reflection of how strong and, and viable a family is, as well as how well-resourced a community is. So how does that inequity play out in Santa Fe? 
but we've been actually working then within within an education education system that's foreign to most people here in uh, you know native and mexican american chicano that wasn't designed for them it was designed to pacify an occupied population which is universal it's not just here so it's actually been a, a way of maintaining the status quo rather than changing it. So who gets the short end of the stick here in Santa Fe? From starting from preschool all the way through college, uh, outcomes and, and opportunities are pretty much going to be income based. It's going to depend on where your family fits into the economic categories here in Santa Fe. And how can we help kids that are in places with fewer opportunities or fewer resources? In the short term, I think part of what we have to do, and especially in this COVID um, moment, Part of what we have to do is we have to take resources to the neighborhoods rather than, than leave everything behind the walls at the schools. When the schools closed down, uh, from one day to the next, all of a sudden kids didn't have access to, to not just learning, but food, social workers, after school programs, enrichment activities, et cetera. What do these inequities tell us about our community in general? Well, they tell us where the priorities are, right? When budgets are constructed, budgets are a moral statement. So when the city is saying, you know, we're going to build an austerity budget uh, and everything is, is on the chopping block except police, right, and fire department, uh, that says something. So can you, in one sentence, describe a future where all kids have equal opportunity in Santa Fe? Just consider this for a moment. So you have a community on the south side that within four blocks, in any direction, a young person can find a park, can find a clinic where they can uh, have public transportation that will take them anywhere in the city. There's hot spots everywhere. Everybody has, a, has accessible and affordable housing uh, and health care, et cetera. What is your dream for education in Santa Fe? My, my dream for education is that we, that we reinvent it. It's one of those monuments, actually, that has to come down. It is truly an honor for me to speak to you all and to be the first to say congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. We believe in you guys. We know that you guys are gonna be the change that needs to happen in this world, and we're with you. Somos Unidos. Never did you imagine that all that you look forward to your senior year would be taken away from you. But you are going to be stronger because of it. During such times, you will need to reach down deep into your soul and summon courage. The good news is, you are now likely to make more money and live longer with a high school diploma. That's what the statistics say anyway. I know you all are going to make this a better world for all of us. Thank you. Hey son, are you done graduating yet? That kind of sucks. Anyways, did you open up the present I got you? Oh yeah, your old math book from middle school. Thank you, Dad. That got me out of a lot of trouble when I was your age. I'll be sure to read it. Have you decided which law school you want to go to? No, no, you know, I don't know if that's what I want to do with my life. Well, if you do one thing right, establish good credit. You know what, you're right. I'm, I'm going to start by paying my phone bill early this month. What are you looking for? My, my phone bill, you haven't seen it anywhere? I'll call it. You can't call a phone bill. Why not? What, what do you mean why not? It's a piece of paper. What's a piece of paper? The bill. I'm Bill. I know you're Bill. I know you know I'm Bill, but I want you to call me Dad. Is this a trap? You don't know what a phone bill is? Oh, just because you graduated high school, you think you're this smart hotshot, huh? I'll have what you're having because I, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me draw it out for you, high school graduate. My friends call me Bill. But you call me dad. No, like a phone bill. My name is dad. You call me dad. I know. I'm just saying. And I'm just saying after 18 years of bringing you up, you call me dad. Mm. The nerve of this kid. You give him one book and he thinks he's the king of the world. That's not what I meant. Get out of my house. Just cherishing my time with my kid. It's much easier to cherish it than get frustrated in the end. Who looks crazy? You're crazy. <laughs> I was talking about me.
Not you. Yeah, I like that part too. It kind of... It's bumpy. Yeah, I wish I'd taken advantage of that a little more. Next time. Next time. Next time. Making this tiny stuff. One, I mean, what a great thing to give you a sense of control in an uncontrollable moment. Careful, kiddo. And so this is a, a little piece of Instamorph that I just took and made a quick thumb ball with and then um, sprayed adhesive on the inside and then built this little house and set it in there. This is, this is a tiny dumpster that I'm very, very proud of. Yeah, old trash bags full of real trash. That dumpster, you know, it's got a story. You know, I get to tell the dumpster story. I get to tell the story of this little alleyway and this forgotten German townhouse. <laughs> Sixteen, oh, six, oh, I want to get the date right. 1665? Newton. There was like a, the flu came through and he had to isolate. And while isolated, chilling out with his family, he like comes up with the concept of gravity. That's like some big stuff, you know, that changed all of us. And that's our show tonight. Thank you so much, Santa Fe. Uh, we love having your contributed content, so keep kicking that stuff in. Um, a huge thanks to uh, the organizations who contributed their own content tonight. Amp Concerts, Meow Wolf, Santa Fe Symphony, Searchlight, and Earth Care. Um, and we're delighted to be doing this. Uh, it's an important time for us to be telling the stories of our town during this time. Um, so we'll be going out tonight with uh, a short piece by artist and composer uh, Dan Stevenson. <laughs>